This is Robin Nelson with Horror Pop After Midnight. I'm over here at the Days of the Dead convention in Indianapolis. And my guest tonight is producer and special effects makeup, Philip Falcon. How's it going, Philip? Pretty good. How you doing, man? So um, tell me what you've been up to lately. Well, you know, after Terrifier 2, which uh, turned out to be a hit in the movie theaters, a um, lot of talk, a lot of... Uh, post-production work even after the film was done because we had to get it ready for foreign theaters and everything um and dealing with cons you know coming down and meeting the fans and getting to know people and by the way thank you all because without you we aren't here having this little discussion um it, it's been a lot of back office paperwork why well, i bet that i bet i bet it's a hassle for you and damien well, yeah. Well, Damien's busy. He's been doing the circuit for a long time. I only come uh, to a few. Um, what I do is I support New Jersey Veterans Network. Um, they're a cool group of guys that uh, take care of veterans with PTSD and their families. So um, Terrify has been uh, helping me help them. Um, but Damien's got his things to do, and he's got to get ready for Terrifier 3. I'm still working on things from Terrifier 2 on the back office, like I said. And we're getting ready to start pre-production on Terrifier 3. So is it going to be more bloodier and gorier than the first two? Is it going to top both of them? Well, one thing that I think Damien and I have both decided was we always want to top what we've done in the past we always want to do better so we're always going to try to up the game um listen what we've done is pretty odd um and upping the game is, is tough to do but we're going to do our best i don't think anybody's going to be disappointed that's pretty cool too i'm going to ask you the same question that what i asked michael levy okay since terrifier 2 got real popular at the theaters everywhere in the u.s and you know overseas and it made like over a million dollars do you think damien is up the level where wes craven was when he did the first original nightmare on elm street um let's i i i couldn't answer that in any other way than saying i do not know wes craven i do know damien I could tell you Damien is the real deal. Damien is a dynamite guy, and it's not because I'm partners with him. It's because he, I do not associate too often with people that I don't respect and love, and Damien is one of those people that I would go to battle with. He's a dynamite guy. He's real, he's genuine, and he's an honest person, and he's very talented. Let's, you know, let's, let's put that out there. So, um, how much fun did you do, um, do on Terrifier 2 with all the, you know, spe special effects and makeup? Um, did you have fun, um, you know, working with Lauren, Elliot, and all of them, especially David? How much fun did you have with David Howard Horton? Okay, so, from Terrifier 1 and Terrifier 2, uh, Terrifier 1, I was learning special effects with Damien, great teacher. Um, I, I goof around with him because he's self-taught special effects, and I always say, well, now I'm special. I'm self-taught, too, because if you were self-taught and you taught me, basically it's self-taught. Um, but anyway, Damien uh, taught me how to do special effects. I helped mold with everything on Terrify 1. We built everything together. Terrify 2, we hired a company to do it, and uh, they backed out at the last minute. So Damien goes, what are we going to do now? And I said, well, we're going we're to make a film. We're going to start working again. And we, uh, we did it again. And I had just had open heart surgery. So my wife was not thrilled when I walked down into our basement and started doing special effects with Damien a month and a half after my surgery. And, um, but we did it. You know, we worked it now dealing with our cast. I'm going to say most people would come up here and just blow smoke up everybody's butt saying, oh, they're the greatest. Oh, this, this person is amazing. This is this. I could genuinely say I don't do that. And I could tell you I don't have a problem with anyone in my cast. They are amazing people. They all had the same goal to make the best possible movie. And I think we all strove to just do whatever was needed to be done and, and to work through any conflicts that we had and to, to get through any problems that we had together. They're all a great group of people. So um, who made uh, Lauren's costume in Terrifier 2? Oh, God. That, that's, that, my God, you could, you could get a laundry list of people. We hired somebody to do it. He started to mold it. Damien d designed it. Um, then it was constructing it and making it. And uh, 
I think the first set was pretty much foam, if I'm not mistaking, foam and leather. I was cutting leather strips, Olga, Olga Turka, um, Jackie was putting it together. Me and Damien remolded everything that was foam and we made it uh, like a rubberish material. Um, we had Alana painted it. Um, I mean, you just like, 10 people worked on that costume and putting that thing together and keeping it together door. I mean, you got to remember that was a, that was, we only had one costume by the way. So uh, keeping it together throughout that, the shoot was insane. And I give Olga and Jackie all the credit in the world. My God, we had so many scenes, like even in the tank when she's in the water, the, the wings were, they were floating in the water. So we had to just keep changing wings. Oh my God, it was insane. So um, how'd you meet Damien and how'd you guys, uh, you know, become partners? Um, on my first movie, Joe's War, I, you know, it was a movie about PTSD. A veteran comes back from war, has PTSD. So I had to show some war scenes. I didn't have a high budget. And I turned to uh, my associate on Joe's War, my friend John DeMeo, and I said, we need a special effects person. And he had just done a short and Damien did the blood work on the short. So I said, yeah, bring him down. So when he came down, he says, what do you want me to do? I said, I need a little blood coming out. I had no idea how good Damien was. So he, I just said, do this, do this, and he did it. And, uh, but he was such a nice guy. Like I said, he was a genuine person, somebody that I could see myself hanging with and talking to. And um, he had mentioned a couple of times on the, the little bit of time that we were together about this movie that he wanted to do about a clown. And um, I was not a horror fan, you know, not, not, in the sense of slashers, I, I was more a universal horror fan, you know, Dracula, Frankenstein. Um, and uh, so when I was done shooting Joe's War, I said, I'm going to raise money to do a movie titled uh, Paintball that I had written, an action film. And he said, uh, I said, when I'm trying to raise the money for that, would you like me to try and raise money for your horror film? So he goes, sure, thanks. So I said, all right, send me what you're looking to do and I'll see if anybody's interested. And he sent me it, and I said, that's all you're looking for? I think it was like 30 grand. He goes, 30 grand, we'd be partners, this and that. And I said, you know what? Let's do it, you teach me special effects. And he said, okay. And he told me later on, he thought I was full of shit. And uh, I wrote him the check the next day, and he goes, holy shit, let's go, let's do it. So uh, yeah, you know, we started doing it, and. Uh, at the same time, a tenant of mine moved out of my house in Staten Island, and I said, oh, now we got a studio to make the special effects. Let's go to work. And for three months, me and Damien was shoulder to shoulder building special effects, and that's when you get to know somebody real well because when things are going good, everybody's your best friend. When things are going shitty, it becomes like, oh, my God, how did I deal with this guy? But it was never like that. When things didn't work, let's try it again. Let's do this. Let's do that. He actually burnt down my kitchen that I had just redone. <laughs> Thank you, Damien. I, I did pl plug it. Um, the day before, I was taking my wife away on our first vacation in forever. And he's calling me, and I'm in a restaurant right about to get on, a, like, right the night before going on the plane. And he's telling me how the house was on fire. And I'm like, all right, don't talk now. Don't talk. <laughs> and uh, finally, I said, like, he, he, he burnt our kitchen down. Uh, <laughs> And that was right after I told him, don't go in this kitchen anymore. I have a kitchen downstairs. Use that one. But in any case, everything was fine. And uh, we built a camaraderie from there. And then um, when Terrifier was first released, I said, you know, it's pretty good. It's going out well. It's looking good. And this was before it was on Netflix. But we went to my first con that I had ever gone to for uh, horror films. And it was um, in Arizona. And I saw people all flocking to, to us for Art the Clown. And I was like, hmm. I, and I started asking him, how long has that guy been around? How long has uh, Freddie been around? How long has Jason been around? He was telling me, and I said, we got to go bigger. We got to sit down. We got to talk. We got we to gotta do a bigger, a bigger budget. And uh, that's how Terrifier 2 was born. Oh, that is amazing. I didn't know that was born like that. Yeah. I mean, there was another actor who played Art the Clown before David Howard. So what made Damien uh, go for David Howard than the last actor? Well, these are, these are more questions for Damien, but I do know the answer as far as I know. Okay. You know, I can't talk for Damien. But um, supposedly Mike Gianelli, who was the original Art the Clown, um, 
didn't want to do it anymore for for some reason. I think he wanted to raise a family, which is very commendable, and um, wasn't into the uh, actor scene. I I don't believe. But um, Damien had told me, he goes, well, if we're going to go away from that, I would like him to be more of uh, more humor to go into it, I guess. He wanted a tall, skinny actor. And I said, um, he don't talk. Why don't we look for a mime? And he says, this is a good idea. We'll try and get somebody to mime. And there aren't many mimes looking to do this kind of stuff. But David, who had some studies in mime, which we found out later, but he came in and he did an audition that just cracked me and Damien up and Damien looked at me because we don't have to look at anybody else I said I don't think so either and uh, that that's how David became uh, Art the Clown okay now uh, besides uh, um, you know film making and all that great stuff do you have any like nerdy passions do you have like a passion you like you know like a nerdy hobby or something or mm. nerdy <laughs> um, yeah I do actually uh, I I happen to be a collector, uh, some type of collector. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to say I'm not the type of collector to, to get things and to put them all over the, the walls except for sports memorabilia. Um, but I, I, I have a thing for G.I. Joes and for action figures. And I love the 12-inch action figures. I have Captain Action from the 60s. I have G.I. Joes from the 60s. I have Johnny West from the 60s. I have Bonanza from the 60s. So I do like to collect dolls if you might, if you may hey there's nothing wrong with that um i like to collect gi joe action figures i grew up in the 80s and i got all the gi joes but i also got the new gi joe declassified series figures and those are so addicting there's so many of them i'm getting this like huge hole in my wallet <laughs> are those the uh six inch figures yeah. yeah you see i never got into the six inch figures after you play with 12 inches like you know <laughs> Oh, tw okay. Are you getting a little kinky there? Yeah, that's what I was going for. <laughs> hey, bigger the better, right? That's right. That's what they say. Although the six-inch figures makes more sense. <laughs> so are there any uh, other projects you're working on? Um, well, I just helped out on stream. I did a little special effects for stream um, with uh, the Fuzz on the Lens boys, um, who I've you know, I brought them into the fold also on Terrify, by the way. I don't Got know if you knew Mike that. And Jason. Oh, Mike, Jason, Steve. Don't forget Steve. How do you okay, forget Steve? Steve? Steve Steve is the man. Um, but uh, they actually worked on Ter on Joe's Wall with me. Uh, I was introduced to them, and I brought them on. I needed help when I was filming Tom Sizemore. I needed a crew. I had no crew. It was a spur of the moment. And I, and uh, through a friend, Jason Milstein, we grabbed the, the Fuzz Boys. And um, they came down, and they were... Again, like Damien, genuine Mr. Falcon. I said, don't call me Mr. Falcon. Mr. Falcon died a couple of years ago. You know, I'm Phil. But um, very respectful. They wouldn't let me lift. They said, go direct. I got this. Go, and I'm a hands-on guy. I think I've proven that now. But I build my own stuff. I, I'm very hands-on. Um, they were grabbing everything. And they, them and my son were putting everything together for the scene. And when we were done with that, when we were filming Terrify, Damien goes, I want to reshoot this cop scene. I, I need some cops. And I said, I, I know a, bump, a couple of boys that helped me out on Joe's War. They're really nice kids. I said, why don't we give them a chance? And uh, when we did that, he also brought Mike in as the exterminator. And uh, Steve and Jason become the cops. And then uh, after that, we brought them on as production team for Terrifier 2. And because of that, they brought Damien in and, and I, myself on stream. So stream should be coming out, I, I, would, I would assume, by Halloween. And then um, I'm trying to get a film uh, off the ground called Blood Scent, written by Daryl Pennington. I really like it. It's a horror thriller type thing. So it, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool concept. Now, speaking of Jason, he talked me into getting a Sienna tattoo from Terrifier 2. And it was right, you know, before the movie was going to come out. And he's like, he's like, I don't think he will. And I was like, yeah, I will. And I go, would you ask Lauren uh, permission? Because, you know, I want her to know. He's like, he's like, yeah, if you get a let her know. So I did. I taught, uh, he taught me into it. And then I got it right here. <laughs> I saw it before. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, it was wild, and after I got, now everybody else is getting seeing the tattoos. I mean, Terrifier ha just has a huge cult following. And what are your thoughts about how indie horror films are 
going to the big theaters and how indie horror is on fire right now? Okay, so, um, you know, I, I love the idea that there are uh, indie horror films hitting the theaters. I think, uh, I think the fact that, you know, Terrifier came out and on such a low budget, they realized that you don't have to have a $40, $50 million budget to make it in theaters. You know, you could do pretty good. People want to see some good quality projects. The things I worry about are if the theaters get ridiculous and start just taking in anything, even if it doesn't have any, you know, oh, productional value. Yeah, so that could hurt that in that sense. Like if they bring in a lot of weak productions and, um, and it falls flat, they may turn away from it as quickly as they are bringing them in now. Um, that being said, if they choose carefully and don't just take anything, um, I think it'll I think it'll be a good move for the indie industry, not only in horror but in any other um, genre. Um, the thing you have to worry about is right after Terrifier went into theaters and did so well, I noticed there was and I don't want to mention names, but there was like three or four horror films went in right away and they were just, in my opinion, very very weak. And they didn't they didn't stand the test of time in its own day. So um, they were they were very weak and it fell flat. And the thing I worry about is that the theaters start saying, well, maybe this is not such a good idea. Maybe that was a fluke. And it's not. You just need the right material going in. And I'd like to add something about Sienna. You brought her up. Yeah. Let's hear about Sienna. Yeah. OK. So you got the, the tattoo. Yeah. Um, Lauren Levera did every stunt of hers except the fall and let me tell you something that was a lot of stunts she's amazing just wanted to get that out there being that you brought her up lauren was amazing she's she's the real deal as well she's active she was so into character her and damien discussed the character constantly but she was so physical so physical and she did all her own stunts and those were tough stunts i believe it because she's done other stunt work before the terrifier films too so she's she's a badass without a doubt without a doubt i wouldn't mess with her i wouldn't mess with her either <laughs> so where can everybody find you on social media and follow you and damien and what's coming up next for terrifier 3. um for me i'm on facebook as philip falcone um on Instagram, you put me on the spot. You should have warned me. I have no idea who I am on Instagram. It's, 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 it's Philip Falcone on Instagram. There you go. Because I follow him. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. See, look, I'm, 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 oh, yeah, and he's also, you know, everywhere in the United States. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, uh, and then, of course, on the uh, Art the Clown Appreciation Society, we, we, we do follow it. You know, it, it's brought in a lot of fans, so we stay active on there. We actually comment on there. Um, I don't know. Uh, Damien is Damien Leone on Instagram. Um, I don't even know if he's on Facebook. Yeah, he's on Facebook because I see him comment on some of my stuff. <laughs> Sometimes it's behind the scenes and he says, will you calm down? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can see it. Like, come on, Elfo, calm down. Thank you so much for taking your time to come on. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, I got to tell you, um, anybody that came out and uh, supported the veterans and Terrifier, thank you so much. Without you guys, you know, who knows? That's good. And uh, there you have it.